everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet the Thermal Stitch Scrubby, which is this scrubby right here. It is worked very simply in the single crochet thermal stitch. So although you're only working sort of one layer of fabric, there's no sewing pieces together or anything like that, it's uh, double the thickness of a regular uh, single crochet fabric. So this is what we're going to use today. These scrubbies measure approximately three and a half inches by three and a half inches. You can certainly adjust the size to the size that you prefer and just by adding or subtracting single crochet stitches. It is worked using small amounts of crochet cotton and the red heart scrubby. So the red heart scrubby is this textured yarn here. This one is a polyester. It does also come in uh, cotton as well, but it has um, this texture that is quite good for scrubbing pots and dishes and that kind of thing. Along with it, at the same time, you are going to use a cotton yarn, uh, worsted weight cotton with that number four on it, just your favorite of choice. I typically use a Burnett. I believe this one here today is a uh, Mary Maxim brand. So um, that is what we're going to do. <laughs> You're also going to need a six millimeter crochet hook and then a pair of scissors and yarn needle, of course, for finishing off. The free written crochet pattern can be found on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com and I'll provide the direct link for you in the description of this video. So I'm glad that you have decided to join me and if it's your first time or you haven't already, please I invite you to subscribe and uh, check out some of the other videos that are here on my channel. So for our pattern today, we are going to work it using our one strand of scrubby and our one strand of cotton held together. Okay, so you're going to work with them at the same time. You're going to start by making a slip knot and then you are going to chain 11 stitches. Five. Make sure that you're always working with both strands. There's 10 and there's 11. We're now going to work our foundation row here of single crochet stitches. And normally when I crochet, uh, I know many of you have noticed it, when I work into my foundation chain, I typically work into these back bumps. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to turn it over so that I'm looking at the top of my stitches. So I'm going to see these lovely little V's. And I'm going to be working into the back loop only of these V's and you will be too. So you're going to the back loop only is the horizontal bar of that V that is the furthest away from you. So you're going to work under only that loop and you're going to single crochet into the second chain from your hook. So one, two, and to e into each all the way across. So there's one working under the back loop only. At the end of this row and at the end of every row, you are going to have a total of 10 stitches. It does take a little bit to get used to working with both strands together but it is much easier to add the cotton when you're working with this scrubby yarn. It just makes it easier to see. So you single crochet in the back loop only and each stitch all the way across. And this is what you're going to have. You're then going to chain one and we're going to turn our work. At this time, you are going to start working a thermal stitch. 
And your thermal stitch is going to be in the, the first stitch and in each stitch all the way across. Now how you work the thermal stitch, so when you turn your work, you're going to have your back loop only here. And if you look at the back side, you're going to have another unworked loop. Another, it would have been the front loop, but it's now the back loop because it's on the back on the opposite side. And sometimes this first one is hard to see, but it is there. So for the thermal stitch, you're going to be working through both of those loops. So the back loop of your first stitch and then you're going to put your hook down into the stitch directly under it into the back loop only of that stitch and you're then going to complete your single crochet stitch so draw up your loop through both of those loops and complete your single crochet okay I'll show you that again so you're going to work in the next stitch you're going to work in the back loop only of that stitch go directly down into the remaining back loop worked of the stitch uh, of your foundation chain in this case draw up your loop and complete your single crochet stitch so you're going to do that all the way across so for 10 stitches back loop only down across into your back loop of your foundation chain complete your single crochet stitch so continue that all the way across if you are looking for another more in-depth video I'll again I'll link it in the description of this uh, video and try and have it in the cards at the end but I have another stitch tutorial on the single crochet thermal stitch that might help you out I'm continuing all the way across working in those two back loops and you can see if I look at the front of my work I have my stitches up here and then I have another loop down below here two rows below okay so I'm continuing to work all the way across Two stitches left sometimes the last stitch in the row is a little bit more challenging and getting to find there we go and then at the end of your row two you're going to chain one and turn your work you're now going to continue to repeat that so continue to repeat the thermal stitch for a total of 16 rows because it takes two rows basically to complete um, kind of the length of one stitch just because of the way it is working so you're going to continue to repeat that chain one thermal stitch in each all the way across you're going to repeat that for 16 rows and then you're going to work one final row that kind of finishes it all off together so you can see I'm just continuing on here I have the back loop only straight down into the row two rows below into that back loop and you're just continuing across at the end your little scrubby is going to be almost square so it's almost going to reach that uh, three and a half inches okay so go ahead repeat uh, that row two over and over for the length of your scrubby and then meet me back here and we're going to go over the final row together So once you have worked until your scrubby is measuring approximately three and a half, uh, I almost three and a half inches, you're going to want to complete one final row because if you look at the top of your scrubby, you're going to have sort of this ridge here where you've worked your last row of thermal stitches and then you have this leftover front loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to work one final row of single crochet stitches. So at the end of the row you chain one and you're going to turn your work now your final row of crochet stitches is going to be worked 
in the top of your stitch as you normally would, but also that, uh, that back loop. So you're gonna work under three loops. You're going to insert your hook under the top two loops of your stitch in the last row, and then again go straight down also into that remaining back loop, and then complete your stitch. So you're going to be working through the three loops. I'll show you once again. Into the top of the stitch as you normally would work a single crochet, then down into the remaining back loop, yarn over, and complete your stitch. You're going to do that all the way across. So keep going. Four stitches left here. Final stitch. You're then going to fasten off. And then weave in your ends. And your little dish scrubby is complete. And that's all there is to working this easy thermal stitch disc scrubby. So thank you so much for joining me. Once again, I invite you to subscribe and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye.